What's up, y'all? It's the Alchemist of Sound here with the one, the only, the Gersh of One. Gersh One. Mm -hmm. This is. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> this is a question and answer video where we answer your questions as long as you put questions in front of your question first. We'll get those questions first for the greater. <laughs> so let's just jump into it and start answering questions first. First, um, this question comes from X O P S Mark. Expose Mark. Do you ever think we will find out what the Legion of the Dam actually are? Or would you rather have them stay mysterious? So the Legion of the Damned is a Legion that is damned. And we already know what they are. If you check out our photo facts on the Legion of the Dam, I think it's part two, it tells you what they are. They are the Firehawks chapter who were lost in the warp. And um, they are now, um, because of some warp mishap, um, they have the ability to enter and exit the warp um, they're like astral yeah. forms, basically. Not kind of like astral boy. No, I was thinking more <laughs> like the astral form of Doctor Strange. Yeah, I was thinking of that too. When he goes like this. <laughs> Damn, dude. That's, that's kind of cute. West Side. <laughs> West Side. Uh, what's interesting though about the, like, so I guess the speculation would be like, well, where, did this, where does this power come from? Whether it comes from just the warp or whether it comes from the emperor. Because if it is the emperor, they could be um, saints, basically. Yeah. Um, and Or not saints, demons. Demons. So just like how corn can summon, uh, you know... Blood letters. Yeah, and all that kind of stuff. The emperor can summon these, these mofos. Mm -hmm. But then at the same time, you kind of think, well... The blood letters are just, they just pop into existence. They are corn. And the Legion of the Dam is not just the Emperor. So they're not really like demons. Similar, but not. And like the weird thing about this is that there's been like a whole bunch of reports of like Legion of the Dam popping up in like different sectors of the galaxy at the same time. So it's like, oh, like, is there numerous ones? Can they multiply? What are they? I mean, did I leave my kitchen light on? Who knows, right? Next one. Uh, this one <clears throat> is by Alucard Tepes. So this is the 158th try. What are your favorite Horus Heresy novels? Uh, I don't read the Horus Heresy. <coughs> what? Yeah, I don't read the Horus Heresy. No, I, okay, that I is... listen to it. <laughs> Ooh, audio book. Yeah. I don't know, I don't really have a favorite. Um, they're all good in their each individual way, but... If I had to pick, I'll tell you next time. <laughs> I don't know, I might make a video about it, talking about which, like, the books, what they cover, what order you should read them in, if you like a certain character, what to get into, that kind of thing. I like book two. Damn, boy. Next question comes from <laughs> JF Wizard one Were you guys drinking during this? Sometimes we do. Sometimes we don't. Yeah. Next question. Oh, this is an interesting one. Xeno plays. Which Primarch has the most powerful weapon and armor? Well, I guess currently I'd have to give it to Gilliman because he has a freaking Emperor's Sword. Um, but besides that, I would say... Alpharius, because he has knowledge, and knowledge is power. That is his armor. I don't know, I feel like Horus... Because of his like... claw? Yeah, he's got the, the Talon of Horus, he's got the uh, Drachnian, which is fucking overpowered. Um, but yeah. What is it? It's, it's a demon blade that can literally cut through anything and it steals souls, and for every soul it steals. Like Farsight's sword? Kinda, kinda, yeah. But it's like way, way overpowered, like... Yeah, I'd go with that. The next question comes from Martin Marsek. How many recruits make it to status of Battle Brother? One in 1,000 or even less? It depends on the chapter, but you got it right. It's one in 1,000 for the, <laughs> the, 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 the average. Next one. Uh, this one is by Super Mutant Something. So this is his square root of nine minus four to the second power try. Uh, I don't believe that. That's the first. <laughs> That's the first try. Who or how would or how does a narrative written from a Tyranid perspective look like? Watch Ants Canada, and that's how it would be written. Because it's all about the hive mind. Mm -hmm. And it's about getting um, the, what is it called? The Red Empire? No, the Fire <laughs> Empire. Uh -huh. 
The Fire Nation. The Fire Nation. It's the Golden Empire and the Fire Nation. Yes. So that's how you think of it. Watch Ants Canada and then um, tell them that One Mind Syndicate sent you. <laughs> <laughs> Bombard his latest video with question or with, with uh, yeah, a question in front of the question. This <laughs> uh, by Charlie Dillard. Will it fit? Uh, if you push hard enough. I mean, maybe like put some uh, Dijon mustard on it and it'll be a lot easier. But then it's going to smell. Yeah, that's true. Next question comes from Joffrey Rogers. Orc attacks moons. Are there any left? What well, left? What? Orc attack moons. Are there any left? And oh. Do you... Oh, the, yeah. the rocks. The rocks. Uh, yeah, there's rocks left. Isn't that their main way of, like, space travel? Yeah, because all it is is an asteroid. They get a hold of an asteroid, and then they jump on it, and then they ride it. Sometimes they put rockets on it to kind of steer them. Yeah, and it says, And do you think that the Beast will return along with God's Cool Thraka in this edition? No, because the Beast, I think, can't happen in 50k, not 40k, right? I haven't finished it. <laughs> Spoiler alert for all those people who... Don't know that it's in 50 Next question. Uh, this one is by Vovin. Can Renegade Space Marine chapters replenish their forces? I want my fan chapter to be Renegade, but I also don't want to kill them off in one huge battle. Um, so that's part one. So let's go with that one first. Of course. Yeah, we've. Uh, I think we've answered this before a few times. Uh, they steal Gene Seed. They get... Um, neophytes. Neophytes. They recruit them that way. Enslave people. Yeah. Um, a huge bolster to the forces of chaos is summoning demons, allying with a chaos, chaos god and using those demons as like your shields. Yeah, meat shields essentially. So thousands of thousands of the of the legion died, but they were demons, you could say. Right. Um, or spawn, chaos spawn. Mm -hmm. Also, you can have um, you can have somebody in your chapter, your traitor legion, corrupt. A loyalist legion, and now you you guys got a thousand more recruits. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Part two: Is there any chance that Eldar can help humanity like voluntarily? Like you helped us back then, so let's help you now. Yeah, all the time. Mm -hmm. Kindness, <laughs> sharing um, is caring. That's right. You destroy Slanesh for me. I'll give you. Um... Mm -hmm. And last question: Do orcs make music? War is, is a form of music, so yeah. yeah. Uh, next one comes from Ryan Bushell. If the Emperor succeeded in conquering the galaxy, would he exterminate the Space Marines like he did with the Thunder Warriors? As they would no longer be ne necessary and are only built for war. Yes. Um, that is actually one of um, Percherabo's big reasons why he like didn't like the Emperor in the beginning. He wanted to like, he found out that the Emperor killed the Thunder Warriors and he threw it at his face. And he was like, like, not only do you treat me like shit, but you're going to treat everyone like shit in the future. Like we were built for a purpose and that purpose is up, which is contradicting to what, um, the, if you check out our, our 40 facts on the surviving Thunder Warriors, the Thunder Warriors that survived the, the massacre, um, because at, at one point, like, the, uh, after the battle that unified Terra, the Emperor sent, um, you know, kill teams to get rid of the Thunder Warriors, and the Thunder Warriors weren't mad at the Emperor. They're like, well, we understand. So for something that primitive to be cool with it, and then a Primarch not to be cool with it, and actually develop some type of, like, daddy issues, that's just, that's just a genetic flaw right there. It is what it is. I'm not saying it. I'm just spraying it. Next question. Uh, <clears throat> this one's by Brandon Harden. Would that mouth do? <laughs> yeah. Um, if you're a recruit, then you eat <laughs> the emperor and you get his genetics and you become the emperor. Is a beak considered a mouth? No. Well, no, right? Because a beak would be kind of like lips. Because recruits cr have beaks yeah so then it does have a mouth it mm -hmm. just it doesn't have lips it has a beak right well what happens when your nose is on your beak does that mean that your nose is on your lips <laughs> like i guess huh. that's interesting birds are weird 
They used to be dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. Uh, Denny Wijaya. What do you guys think is the most elite troop for each race? Um, Space Marines, humans. The Eldar are the um, Exarchs. I think they're called, right? Because each, each um, path has one. Yeah. And then the, um, the Necrons have the Overlords, right? Yeah, I think, well, wouldn't it be a Necron Lord then? Because that's the most elite of the elite. Oh, yeah. And then the Orcs have um, what, War nob, Bosses or Nobs. Um, and then the Tyranids have Flying Hive Tyrants mm -hmm. or Norin Queens. <laughs> Norin Queens. Um, they should make a model for that. I think they do. I don't think they do. It might be like a fan or like a oh. third party. And then who, who's left? Mm, you say orcs. Orcs. Dark Eldar. Dark Eldar would be the, uh, what are the Cabal leaders? What are they called? They're not just lords, right? No, they're like, they have a special name. Ar Archons. Archons. Archons, yeah. yeah. And then, um... Oh, the Tau, obviously you got your commanders and your ethereals. ethereals. Uh... That's it. I think so. Just chaos, but greater demons, I guess. Yeah. Next question comes from Nico Wilder. Could a bolter round pierce the armor of a modern day tank? Oh, yes. Yeah. Last question. This one is by Oh no, I lost it. He said it was it was Peter something. Oh okay. here it is. Oh. So this question is by Philip Widemaster. <laughs> Would an alliance between the Eldar, the Tau, and the Imperium be enough to defeat all of the Tyranids for good. Love your videos and stay awesome. And I, and I, and an alliance between who? The Eldar, the Tau, and the Imperium. Oh, yeah, of course. Really, you think they can take on all of the Tyranids? They took on the um, flat high fleet behemoth, right? Yeah, but that's only a high fleet, though. That's and that's not even the whole fleet. That might just be a tendril. Well, that's what I'm saying. Well, that's what I'm saying, though. Like. They don't. They're not cooperating with each other. The Tyranids aren't because Tyranid high fleets um, they, they, fight each yeah, other. They attack one another. So what I think is like the the Imper or that alliance would take advantage of that. And go high fleet to high fleet, or maybe even pit them against each other. Yep. Yeah, I could see that happening then. Yeah. Those were the questions for today. Thank you for sending those questions our way. If you guys have more questions for us, comment down below. And don't forget to share these videos with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, whatever social media you guys use. It really helps out the channel when you do so. That's right. We post videos each and every day, so stay tuned and stay subscribed for more epic 40k content coming your way. Sound Alchemist. Gersh 1. And we are out of here.